Okay, for the next speaker, thank you so much again, uh, Dr. Loganathan. Good presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. For the next speaker, we have with us today uh, Dr. Guy Bloom. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure whether I'm saying it right, but yeah. And Dr. Guy is, is a senior scientist uh, with uh, the Alliance of uh, Biodiversity in Fiat, and he's based in, in, in Uganda. Uh, this uh, Dr. Guy is, is a Belgian, Belgian national, and has been involved in banana and, and subsystems research since 1995. Guy's work is predominantly focusing on East and Central Africa, with a research focus on integrated disease management, disease risk assessment, disease epidemiology, production systems, system characterization, Musa Musa germplasm characterization and evaluation, agronomy, sustainable intensification and diversification of banana and insect based cropping systems. Well, that's that's, uh, that's really heavy on banana, Dr. Guy. Yeah, sure you're an expert. So Guy has made significant contributions to academic and technical capacity building partnership, strengthening knowledge, material development, knowledge, communication, and dissemination. Still in, uh, are you, are you, uh, are you online, uh, Dr. Guy? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm around. Yeah. Let, let me... Yes, uh, well, I, I think if, uh, I've said enough for you, uh, I, I, I'd like to invite you to... Yeah, go ahead with the presentation. Thank you so much. And, and, and before that, thank you for your time. Yeah. I mean, I, I know you've been very busy lately. Yeah. So. I, I hope you can see the full yes, can. screen. Yes, it's okay. on. It's on, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the, the organizers to, uh, to have uh, invited me. Um, so my presentation is uh, focusing on Xanthomonas wilt of banana, which is uh, a bacterial wilt disease. Uh, present in uh, East and Central Africa. So I'm specifically going to zoom in on uh, effective uh, field level uh, management uh, practices. Uh, so maybe first, um, Xanthomonas wilt uh, currently is only present in East and Central Africa. As you can see here, the, the orange uh, colored uh, countries. And then the, the other bacterial wilts, uh, for example, MOCO uh, is present in uh, Latin America and Asia. And then as we know also, uh, banana blood disease uh, is present in, in Asia. Uh, a little bit of, of, uh, of history. Uh, Xanthomonas wilt was first discovered in uh, Ethiopia already in the, the 1930s uh, by Castellani. And, and that was then uh, officially confirmed in, in the late 60s, early 70s um, in uh, Ethiopia. And it was only in 2001 that the disease spread to uh, Uganda and Eastern Congo. And then over the past two decades, um, the disease has gradually spread uh, through all the production, banana production systems in Eastern Congo, in Uganda, uh, in Western uh, Kenya, uh, North, uh, Western Tanzania and, and Rwanda and, and Burundi. So here, as I said, uh, the disease started uh, on NSAID uh, in, in uh, Ethiopia. So here's some typical uh, symptoms on, on NSAID. Uh, you see the, the leaf uh, yellowing and, and, and wilting. You, you also see the the, the bacterial ooze in, in the, in the pseudostem, the yellow uh, ooze in the middle here. And then eventually the, the plant uh, dies. Mm -hmm. For the case of banana, um, you also have, if you cut a pseudostem and, and you wait half an hour, you have yellow ooze uh, coming out. You have the wilting, yellowing of, of, the, of the leaves. Um, if you look at, at the level of the, the fruit pulp, uh, you see uh, uh, fruit pulp uh, discoloration. And that's at the level of the inflorescence or, or the bunch um, after an insect vector uh, transmission, you have uh, wilting of the, of the bracts uh, or at the limit even rotting of the bracts or male buds and the rashi and then uh, premature uh, fruit uh, ripening. Uh, that, that was maybe just quickly as, as, as a comparison, uh, maybe to point out, I mean, the, the clear similarities. 
between xanthomonas wilt and, and, and blood disease. Now, in the case of xanthomonas wilt, uh, the discolorations are more yellowish uh, or, or light brown. In the case of blood disease, it seems to be more darker brown or, or reddish in, in, in color. Now, for the, the mode of uh, transmission, uh, the bacteria can be transmitted with, with garden tools, uh, machets, uh, which are used in, in, in the fields, in, in the plantation. Also, various insect vectors uh, transmit the disease uh, from, from a disease to a healthy inflorescence. Uh, it can be bees, it can be stingless bees, it can be uh, fruit flies and, and other uh, larger uh, flies. Uh, obviously, also with uh, infected uh, planting materials, but also, but maybe to a lesser extent, uh, with larger flying birds or or even uh, bats that feed on, on on the fruit pulp and then the fruit pulp of uh, infected uh, plants. Maybe lastly, uh, browsing cattle or small ruminants, um, which are often just roaming around uh, the, the, the various fields uh, across the village, they can also transmit um, the disease. Now for the control strategy, um, when the disease arrived in Uganda, in Eastern Congo, uh, about mm -hmm. 20 years ago, mm -hmm. then control methods, which were known for mokul disease in Asia or blood disease in Asia, were applied in Central uh, Eastern um, Africa, to, to, uh, to control um, Santomonas wilt. So for example, early removal of male butts uh, using a forked uh, wooden stick, uh, sterilization of garden tools, well, the use of clean planting material and complete uprooting of diseased mats um, were applied. Where all, there was also quite a bit of research done on, on these various uh, control strategies. But they all proved to work quite well for, for the case of, of uh, xanthomonas. Now, maybe for uh, sterilization of garden tools, uh, initially we advocated for uh, the use of fire. So put your matchet in fire until the, the metal blade is, is too hot to touch. Um, this works quite well, um, but farmers often uh, kept a knife in fire for minutes and minutes and minutes. And if you keep it too long in, in fire, it has a negative effect on the metal and your knife tends to become less, uh, less strong and less, uh, less effective. So more recent research has shown that um, if you clean your, uh, your, your garden tool, your, your matches, your knife with soap and water and then rinse it with water, uh, it's as effective as fire or, or household uh, bleach. Uh, the last one here um, is uh, single Z stem removal, which is a technique which was developed uh, specifically um, for, for the control of uh, uh, xanthomonas wilt. So single disease stem removal, it, it builds on uh, the fact that there is incomplete systemicity meaning that uh, there is incomplete movement of bacteria within, uh, within a mat. So within a cluster of physically uh, interconnected uh, plants and also latent uh, infections uh, uh, occur. So it started with, with observations in, in farmers fields where um, farmers were advised to uproot uh, the whole mat if, if a plant uh, within that mat was, was uh, having clear uh, symptoms. But in the case of Central Africa, East Africa, often these mats are enormous. So to uproot a whole, a whole mat is quite cumbersome and, and farmers resorted to only cutting the visibly uh, diseased uh, stems. Now in these fields, it was observed that uh, still quite a number of, of plants uh, keep on growing and, and produce um, edible bunches. So already that indicated that there was an incomplete movement of bacteria uh, into the, the attached uh, uh, shoots. Um, then in addition, uh, quite um, a good volume of, of work was done to look at movement of bacteria within, within plants and within 
uh, mats. And again, that clearly showed that there was an incomplete movement of bacteria within, within a mat. So here, for example, when, when you look at on the right, that cluster of, of, of stems uh, physically interconnected at, at the level of the corn. So let's say if one stem is, is infected, it doesn't necessarily mean that all these stems within the mat will get uh, infected. So here maybe quickly, um, research uh, has shown that, um, okay, the corn tissue is, is relatively dense and, 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 and quite hard. So um, in the lower portion of the corn of an infected plant, uh, a, a, a much lower uh, amount of bacteria was, was, was actually uh, detected. And, and the fact is also that, that the majority of the lateral shoots are attached to that uh, lower portion of the corn. So meaning, uh, let's say after an infection coming from cutting a leaf or, or an insect vector transmission, if the bacteria come down all the way to the corn, at the corn level, uh, they find a barrier. And, um, only limited uh, numbers of bacteria can actually enter into uh, later, uh, lateral uh, shoots. Now here, uh, well, we, we, we removed uh, the leaf sheets or, or the leaves from, from, from these plants. But now if you would imagine that that bacteria would enter from uh, at the level of the inflorescence, they would move through uh, the real stem and then at these points you have, uh, these are insertion points of, of leaf sheets and leaves. So here they would actually move uh, at the insertion point into the leaf, but keep on going down all the way to the corn. And it's here that, that you have this barrier at the corn level. Okay, the, these corns don't, don't have the, the, the lateral shoots attached, but that corn tissue, that, that denser, uh, strong corn tissue uh, is a barrier uh, for the further movements of the bacteria into, into the lateral uh, shoots. So quickly, the, the single Z stem removal technique um, comprises, uh, so regularly uh, at the onset, at least once a week, you have to cut uh, each and every plant with clear symptoms uh, at soil level. Uh, in case it's, it's a plant in vegetative stage, uh, it's best to also remove the apical meristem so the plant does not regrow. Um, uh, for the sterilization of, of the cutting tools that have been used, uh, you don't necessarily have to do it after each plant, each diseased plant that you, that you remove. But let's say if, if you have 10 diseased plants in, in your plantation, you cut at soil level all 10 of them. And then after having done that, uh, you can clean your tool as I mentioned, preferably with water and, and soap. Um, the cut stems, uh, ideally you should leave them intact and move them to the edge of the plantation or put them on a comp compost heap, but don't cut them in, in small pieces because each additional cut will make that ooze uh, can potentially get into the environment or picked up by, by insects or, or browsing uh, cattle, for example. Um, while applying single disease stem removal, let's say in the, in the first three or four months. So in that period, you will, through, through applying SDSR, you will reduce uh, the amount of inoculum uh, within your uh, plantation. So during that time, it's best uh, not to use tools uh, in, in, in your plot, uh, for example, for deleaving, deleaving or, or uh, desuckering. So, and in addition to this, uh, I mean, obviously you have to keep on uh, removing early removal of, of, um, of male buds in order to pre prevent insect vector uh, transmission. So here you can see uh, people removing single stem at, at soil level. When this is done, uh, one has to be careful not to, to cut with that um, machete uh, adjacent uh, plant. As, as you could uh, potentially in, infect um, other plants. So just that single stem needs to, disease stem needs to be cut. Now research has shown that um, irrespective of the initial level of, of this plant disease incident, uh, within, um, 
within three months, uh, plant incidence levels dropped to, to, to about 2%. And over the subsequent months, uh, keep on going uh, even lower. So uh, after about 10 months, you, you have about 1% of, of plant, uh, plant disease incidence. Here you can see a couple of graphs, mainly from work in, in Eastern DR Congo, and, and actually all the trials that, that we carried out, uh, the results were always uh, similar. Um, even if you have a plantation where, where the initial disease incidence is like 50%, um, within a couple of weeks, within a couple of months, you, you get to, to extremely low uh, plant incidence uh, levels. For example, in, in, in this slide, you, you can see on the left, um, that's also in Eastern DR Congo. So you had fields where, where the plant disease incidence was 80, 90%. So farmers had cut uh, most of the stems uh, at soil level. So they just cut it all down, but the corms were still um, in, in the ground. So on the right, it's about 12 months later. So through the application of SDSR, continuous application, we, we were able to, to completely revive uh, the plantation. And, and here you can see then after, um, in, in, in the second year, um, again, uh, bunch production was, was, was picking up and, 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 and in no time was, was, was the same as before uh, the, the pathogen had, had arrived. Then maybe briefly in, in Rwanda, we also compared uh, complete mat uprooting because then you remove um, all the inoculum. In, in the case of uh, single Z stem removal, as I said, uh, latent infections do occur. So there is still um, a little bit of, of inoculum within the system that, that kind of lingers on. But, but if you look at, at the aspect of disease incidence, plant disease incidence within your, your field, then complete mat uprooting and single Z stem removal, uh, you see the, the, the green and the red line clearly and in and, and both sides follow a same, uh, same pattern. And, and through both types of application, uh, you can quickly uh, remove uh, most of, 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 of the inoculum within, within, uh, within your, your plantation. Now, the big difference between single Z stem removal and complete matter fruiting is, is aspects of, of labor costs and, and time needed and money needed to to, to uproot uh, the whole mats, which obviously in contrast to single disease uh, stem removal takes a lot more time and, and, and takes a lot more um, financial investment. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the application of single disease stem removal uh, can revive uh, Exantomonas will devastated uh, plantation into a productive one within a year. Uh, and also the, the method has enormous uh, scaling potential um, because of uh, the, 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 the reduced uh, labor, uh, labor uh, needs and, and, and also uh, reduced income loss for, for farmers because the corms uh, stay in the, in the, in the soil. Uh, the young shoots that are growing up um, um, Quickly, quickly grow, and, and I mean, you don't have to replant. You also don't have to source uh, clean planting material, uh, which um, is a requirement if you <coughs> if you uproot uh, the whole uh, uh, diseased mat. We also found that uh, the technique uh, can be applied in all production systems, be it uh, AAA highland bananas or ABB uh, uh, systems. Now. If, if, for example, if, if the disease just arrived in a village and only a couple of mats um, have the disease, then the farmer could still opt to, uh, to apply complete mat uh, removal uh, because there wouldn't be too many mats that, that need to be uprooted. Also, in, in case of commercially driven systems, uh, for example, in, in the southwestern part of, of Uganda, uh, farmers could also opt to, to uproot uh, the complete mat, as, as in those systems, you don't have enormous mats of, of 10, 20 interconnected plants, but you, you may just have three stems in, in a mat. So it's also maybe not so, 
so uh, so cumbersome to to uproot uh, those smaller uh, smaller mats. Um, yes, and at the onset of the application of single Z stem removal, let's say for the first three to four months, um, it's good to apply it uh, at least once a week. So to gradually uh, remove uh, the inoculum from, from the field. But once you, you see after three, four months that, that actually only a limited number of plants uh, keep on showing uh, symptoms, then you can opt to, to maybe uh, apply SDSR maybe only every two weeks or if, uh, every three weeks. But again, all depending on, on the availability of, of, uh, of labor. Um, as I mentioned, um, there is always inoculum that will stay within, within the plants, within the mats, within your field. Um, so even a year after start, having started SDSR or maybe a year and a half, maybe even two years, you, you could still uh, get some plants that will show uh, symptoms. Now for, for some farmers, for example, small scale farmers in, in, in East and Central Africa, it could be discouraging to still see, uh, you know, plants getting, uh, getting sick, but, but that will only be a very small number of plants. And, and it's just a question of, of uh, being persistent and keep on applying uh, SDSR. Um, maybe another aspect is we, we also looked at uh, risk mapping and, and the risk of spread of the disease um, out of the area where, where the disease is currently uh, present. And it was mainly, I, I mentioned the diseases in, in the eastern uh, Congolese highlands. So, and it's gradually spreading into the, into the Congo basin. So that's clearly a an, an, an disease front. Um, which uh, need to be watched um, as, as the disease is, is moving westwards uh, into the Congo Basin. For other um, areas, for example, in northern Zambia or northern Malawi, uh, there is a certain, a certain infection risk or, or risk of entry of, of, the, of the pathogen. However, there is no uh, connectivity uh, between uh, the banana production sites in those countries and, 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 and the banana production zones which are infected. So there's quite a bit of distance between both. So there's a lower, a lower risk of, of, the, of, the, of the, the, the pathogen uh, to arrive in, in Zambia or, or for example, Northern Malawi or even Northern uh, Mozambique. Now, apart from um, the practices that can be applied, uh, applied on farm, um, also a good block of, of, of research was carried out looking at uh, sources of resistance, uh, trans uh, cisgenic approaches, uh, and more recently, uh, CRISPR or, or CAS based gene editing. Um, I mean, this is not my field of expertise, but um, there is Lina Tripathi, who has been leading uh, this work uh, from the side of, of ITA with, with a lot of um, collaborative um, uh, work. Um, there's, for example, also Valentine Nakato of, of, of ITA, who looked at sources of resistance. I mean, there's, for example, the, the wild diploid Balbiziana uh, that is highly uh, tolerant or, or, uh, or resistant. So, this type of work is also uh, quite, uh, especially the, 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 the transgenic work is, is quite uh, advanced. Uh, maybe the dimension of knowledge uh, over the years, we've, we've done quite a bit of, of knowledge communication. We developed um, leaflets, posters, as you can see here, and, and uh, organized quite a bit of training courses with with farmers, with extension uh, staff. Uh, we developed uh, policy briefs. Um, this is an example. Um, uh, maybe lastly, finally, uh, we also developed an, an artificial intelligence uh, powered smartphone app 
uh, called Tumaini. Uh, I mean, it's focusing on uh, five uh, diseases, including uh, Xanthomonas wilt, also one pest. So you can, um, it, it, if you take a photo of, of uh, fruit pulp discoloration or a photo of a complete plants with wilting uh, yellowing leaves or of a single uh, wilting yellowing leaf or the bacterial ooze on, on a cut stem or premature uh, fruit ripening uh, on a bunch. And if you take uh, with the app, with, with the smartphone photos of that, then the app will, will with, with quite high uh, levels of accuracy, uh, will detect uh, the, the symptoms of, of uh, Xanthomonas wilt. So yeah, this was my last slide. Uh, I thank you uh, very much. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free uh, to ask. Yeah, yeah thank you, Dr. Guy. It's a very interesting presentation, especially on your your, your single stem removal technique. Yeah, it's a very simple, very, very pragmatic, very practical and uh, easy to implement. Maybe we can just take one fast question. Because after this, we've got to go on to a panel discussion. It'll be a short panel discussion. So, uh, uh, I'll let you... Hello, this is Dr. Hussein. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Hussein from Bangladesh. Okay, yeah, please. Sinal okay, okay I'll, I'll, just, I'll just let you ask one question yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Senior Plant Pathologist, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute. Dr. Okay, Hussein. Uh, uh, could you tell me? How to maintain the, how to establish the editing gene in the uh, banana field? Because actually, I did some work um, for purpose to control the banana, banana, especially uh, Fusarium wheel or the Relostonia. I use some uh, novel bacillus, for example, bacillus uh, belangensis uh, and bacillus. Or Agricola or Bacillus tropicus. And therefore, I checked the induction, some molecular mechanisms. But uh, here, I, I observe one paper about the control of bacterial disease of using the CRISPR case based gene editing. So I have a question uh, how actually this practice uh, it might be conducted in the laboratory, but in the field cases, how they establish this technology. This is my own questions. And I want to know if it is possible that I want to establish this in the Bangladesh. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, I mean, yeah, as, as I mentioned for at, at the field level, uh, you, you have the, I mean, the, 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 the practices like early yeah. male, male butt removal, single C stem removal, cleaning of your tools. Um, as I mentioned for, for the CRISPR, uh, CAS work. Um, I mean, that's yeah. that's a recent uh, development. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I can get you in, into contact yeah, with, with Lina Tripathi, uh, who's the key uh, researcher working on that for, for the case of Xanthomonas wilt. Um, if, yeah. if you send me an email, yeah, uh, yeah let, let me maybe send you a couple of okay, papers. I'll tell you that I did the protocol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Professor uh, uh, Relastrina is a great problem. So still, I could not control. But even though I use the different types of bacillus, so if uh, we can use that uh, editing technology, gene editing technology, uh, that we can uh, utilize this one in the uh, film farmer's field, because you know the farmer's field is very important. That will be helpful for our country, Bangladesh. So thank you, madam. Thank you, Professor. I will give you my email. Then you will give the. I, I, I can maybe say, for example, for the for the transgenic uh, or cisgenic plants, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there are already quite a good number available, um, yeah, yeah. which are highly tolerant uh, to Xanthomonas wilt. But you know, due to the the current regulatory framework in in the, in the countries in East and Central Africa where where the disease uh, is present, uh, those plants are not yet in farmers' fields. But um, they are available. Um, but I, I would advise you uh, to contact Lina Tripathi, um, who can okay. provide all the details. Um, yeah, yeah, 
you could okay. you could want yeah okay professor thank you professor okay thank you very much okay i think there's a hand raised there dr chatur i'm going to give you 30 seconds to, to say something okay thank you uh dr plomi could you elaborate the, the status of the banana for the farmer in africa that's uh for the success of this uh, SD, SDSR. Thank you. I mean the, the, the what do we call it? Uh, the single stem. The role of the banana for the farmer in Africa. Yes, I, I, I mean, exactly where Santa Mona's wealth is currently present. Um, if, if you look in Uganda, in Rwanda, in Burundi, and Eastern Congo, uh, banana is, 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 is in, in a lot of areas, is the number one crop. Um, it, it's, if, if you look at, at hills and, and valleys and undulating landscape, you, you would think it's, it's one giant plantation, but it's okay. all smallholder farmers, you know, okay. growing their bananas. But, but not just bananas. I mean, there is uh, intercropping with, with annual crops, with coffee. Um, yeah. Yes, but I banana, mean, banana in, 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 in East and Central Africa is, is uh, especially in the area where Xantamona Zwilt uh, is present, is, is yeah, enormously. Uh, it, is this the main source for income for the farm? It is, um, I mean, banana is not exported, eh? so it's, it's for local markets. Yeah. Um, if, if you look, for example, in Uganda, uh, bananas cultivated in southwestern Uganda uh, go to the market in Kampala or go to the market in, in other larger uh, towns and, and cities. Um, okay. And, and a, lot of, a lot of bananas are also consumed on farm. Eh? So okay. it, it's a source of food and a source of income. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Loganathan and Dr. Guy. Fantastic. Uh, good information shared. Okay, we have to stop now.